So the question is, is cash affected here? So if we go up, we're gonna say, yeah, cash is affected. We pay the employee with cash, a check, but that's gonna be cash in this case. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy cash. I'm gonna go down to H and nine, right click and paste it one, two, three. Also note that we're not talking about payroll taxes or anything right now. We're just, this would be the simplified uh, journal entry for payroll if we didn't have payroll taxes, which we will talk about at a later time. And cash is going to go down by the amount paid being 800. So I'm going to say negative 800 to represent a credit in this worksheet. If we credit something, we're also going to have to debit something. Put the debit on top in cell I8 for 800. Now the only question is, what will that debit be? And if we look at the trial balance, we're looking for something related to payroll. So we see uh, salaries payable here. We see a salaries expense down here. Now, uh, which one are we going to put it into? In this case, it's going to be the expense. When we record the expense for the, the books, for the payroll department, it's generally going to be recorded to an expense. Now, you'll note that there's something in salaries payable right now, and you might be asking, well, why is there something there? And uh, the, the, the reason for that could be that we had an accrual entry, which we'll talk about later, from the prior period. And I'm going to adjust that. We're going to take a look at that and make those adjustments at the end of the period and discuss that as we go at that time. In terms of the payroll department, oftentimes they will just record the salary expense in the uh, salary expense area and be more actually on a cash basis in that, in that way. So expenses have debit balances, such as this uh, miscellaneous expense represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. Expenses generally only go up, and we're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another ex uh, debit. So I'm gonna right click and paste it one, two, three. All right, there's our transaction, debit, the salaries expense, credit cash. We're gonna go ahead and post that out. So I'm gonna look for salaries expense first. That's gonna be in the expense area. It's going to be a blue account over here. So the assets are here first and they're green and then the liabilities are orange and then the equity and then the revenue and then there's expense accounts and here's salaries expense way over here in AI, AI nine. So it's an AI nine way over here. And notice that again, it goes to Z and it keeps on going out. It can be a little confusing to, to go through these screens. There's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate Excel to work with screens that are larger than uh, the screen we're looking at you can manipulate the size uh, you can also freeze the panes and whatnot uh, whatever works for you but in this cell I'm gonna say equals and then I'm gonna hold down the left arrow until I hit the wall I'm gonna go all the way till I hit the wall and then I'm looking for that 800 related to salaries which is in cell I8 and enter and notice you could go over here if you're following the video you could just type in equals uh, I8 but I find that uh, it, it's a lot nicer to go point to it because then you physically are pointing to it and seeing what is going in that cell. Alright, so I'm going to scroll back over here. Now, of course, we we're out of bounds by the 800. The other side being cash. We're out of bounds by the 800 here and here. And cash is going to be over here in P16. So P16 in the cash. We're posting the general journal to the general ledger equals. We're going to point to that 800 now. And the 51.6 is going to go down by 800 to the 58. And we can see we're back in balance here, which is good. Green zero is good because that means the debits minus the credits equal zero. So the debits equal the credits. And what happened to net income? Well, it went down by the 800. So we have the 26, eight now minus the eight minus the four. Note also, if you're using Excel and you highlight a certain set of numbers, it will generally calculate that for you in the formula bar. So there's the 25, six. Here's the 25, six. So that's a handy little thing to have as well. We're gonna go down to the next transaction, which is going to be on 530. 530, we pay cash for miscellaneous expense. So once again, miscellaneous expense, probably not a great <laughs> expense to have, but we're gonna keep the expenses a little bit smaller here uh, so that uh, to keep this problem a little bit more simplified. The expenses will probably have more expenses than any other type of account for most companies. But note that they all act the same way. It's just a matter of how do we want to group the expenses. If we have a lot of little things that we pay for that are not significant, we may put them in accounts such as miscellaneous expense. Other types of accounts similar to miscellaneous expense are like office expense, office supplies. Those are types of things that sometimes people put a lot of stuff into, which uh, may not be exactly office supplies, you know. 
So, but you want to you want to put your expenses in a category system that is one helping you to make decisions, but two isn't so cumbersome that it has so many expense accounts that uh, it's not helping you make decisions. It's just cluttering things up. So, obviously, I don't like the expense uh, miscellaneous type of category too much. But uh, there, if there are some small things that are not uh, material to decision making, it may be appropriate to put them in the miscellaneous. And obviously, if someone just went into a small company and drew cash out of the checking account and spent it and didn't keep the receipts and whatnot, then we are going to have to you know, record it somewhere. And miscellaneous expense or office supplies and whatnot is usually where that type of thing will go. And so then here is cash affected for this transaction. We're going to say that uh, yes, cash is a debit balance. We're going to make it go down. How we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put our cursor under. So here's the date. I'm going to put our cursor under that in H12 in this case. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. The amount that we're going to put there. Uh, the, all right. So the amount will be a negative uh, 250 in this case for the credit balance. If we're going to credit something, we're also going to debit something for that 250. And what will that debit be? And in this case, we already said that the debit will be a miscellaneous expense. So if we take a look at this, remember that the assets are going to be up here on top, then the liabilities, then the equity, then the income, then the expenses down here. We're down here in miscellaneous expense. We can see that the expenses all have debit balances. They only go up in the debit direction. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click, going to copy this account here, going to put it on top in h11 right click and paste one two three so now we're going to go and post this transaction to the general ledger so we're looking for the miscellaneous account we're going to post it to the general ledger which is over here and we can see that this is an order assets are uh where we start off with cash and asset receivable and asset payables and asset are uh prepaid insurance then accounts payables a liability then equity and then revenue and then expenses and of course miscellaneous is way on the bottom because we're kind of like ashamed of it so we put it way on the bottom over here so we got it over in am 22 we have this miscellaneous account so it goes from z and then remember it goes all the way over to am uh 22 down here in miscellaneous we're going to say equals i'm going to post it this way i'm going to hit the left arrow hold it down till i get all the way down here and then scroll up to that 250 which is in i11 and enter uh, again you could just delete it and put in equals i11 uh, you could put the number in there but i highly recommend putting the formula in there because it can really help you if you are out of balance so for example in this case we are of course out of balance by the 250 at this time and that's because we haven't recorded the cash side if we didn't know that and we we're trying to figure it out we could try to do something like what if we just deleted the numbers would it be back in balance over here if we used formulas then it may well be so if i say delete then i could say ah well it's something that has to do with that transaction and then if i say undo then our numbers are back we're back out of balance and then we could try to see well which one of these aren't posted and if i put my cursor there and we use our tracer items here not that one but this one then we can say, ah, that one's posted over there, and I can hit this one and say, oh, that one's not posted. That's the problem. We didn't post that. If we hard code the numbers, we won't be able to do that. And where are those located again? Those are in the formulas area, in the formula auditing, and they're up here in these trace items. So it can be really helpful to figure things out if we use the formulas in this uh, system when we post them. So we're going to post the second half now to the cash. So cash is over here. We're in the credit side. We're in cell P17. I'm going to say equals and then scroll over to that credit of 250 in J12. Once we hit enter, the 50,008 will go down to 50,550. Puts us back in balance over here. What happened to net income? It went down. So we're calculating revenue minus the 800 minus the 65 is the 25, 3. 50 also showing down here 25350 in the taskbar because we are highlighting those areas that is income that's not a loss credits are actually good on the income statement all right next transaction we're down to the end of the month here it's going to be 531 and once again we paid cash for miscellaneous expense so uh, we're paying our bills here and we're not grouping them very well I don't think we're putting them in miscellaneous expense but we're assuming that they're immaterial and therefore we're grouping them into one area here 
and therefore it's going to be a similar transaction we paid cash cash is a debit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the same thing to it by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so i'm going to copy the cash I'm going to put it under the date so here's the date I'm going to put it under the date in h15 right click paste it one two three then we're going to go into the credit column the credit amount being in this case a negative to represent the credit 300 and enter that puts the brackets around it if we credit something we also need the debit and the debit generally goes on top so that will be 300 in cell i 14 the only question is what will that debit be once again we bought we bought something for the miscellaneous expense so <laughs> we got assets and then we got liabilities equity income missile and then expenses all expenses have debit balances they generally only go up and how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so we're going to debit the miscellaneous expense which we already knew because we credited cash right clicking pasting one two three values only now we can post this out in a similar way once again this is a general uh, journal we're going to post that to the general ledger we're going to post miscellaneous expense the general ledger is in order by account we have assets in green liabilities in orange equity in the brighter yellow or blue <laughs> and then revenue and expenses in the less bright blue and we're down here way in the bottom in cell am 23 in miscellaneous expense equals i'm going to hold down the left arrow till i hit the wall and then scroll up to the miscellaneous expense 300 in i14 and enter we should see that 300 po post up here we should see the 650 go up in the debit direction to 950. We'll also see that 950 over here on the trial balance because it pulls over. We are now out of balance by the 300 until we post the cash side of the entry. So we're gonna go to cash uh, general ledger over here in P18, say equals, and then scroll over to the cash, which is the credit. And we see the debit balance here is gonna go down because we're doing the opposite thing to it to 50,250. That puts us back in balance, and we know that net income went down by that 302, in this case 2550, calculated as the revenue less the expenses. Revenue is winning, which is good, by 2550. All right, next transaction on 331 again. We have uh, cash from clients for work done in this month. So we, had, we did work this month, and we got the cash this month. All right, so is cash affected? Yeah, we did work and we got cash. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that on top on cell H17. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. So the amount that we got in this case is 3,000. So we're going to credit 3,000 as well. Negative 3,000 and enter. What will that account be? Well, uh, we earned revenue. That's why people are going to pay us cash because we earned it and we earned it in this time period. So we did the work this time period. We can see that we have assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue. And so revenue has a credit balance. It only goes up. We're going to do the same thing to it in this case, which would be another credit. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to put that underneath in cell H18. Right click and paste it one, two, three. Then we're going to go ahead and post this out. So we'll go over here to cell 0819. I'm in 019 equals and scroll over and point to that 3000. The 50,250 will go up by 3000 to 53,250. Now we're out of balance, of course, until we record the second half. Remember, recording the journal <coughs> entry to the general ledger. And where's the revenue account over here? It's in order assets and then liabilities and then equity and then revenue so here's revenue notice it only has credits because revenue only goes up in the credit direction and we're in af 23 af 23 i'm going to say equals in that cell and then hold down that left arrow till i hit the wall looking for that 3000 there it is and that's the revenue account we're going to hit enter and that makes revenue go up from 26.8 to 29.8 and if we scroll back over to the trial balance we'll see that 29.8 over here as well what happened to net income? It went up by the 3,000 now having 29.8 minus 8 minus 250 giving us 28.50. All right, next transaction. We are still on 531. And we had services provided on account. Cash has not yet been uh, collected. So now this is the work that we did that we didn't get cash in this month for. 
So therefore we did work and haven't got cash yet, but we are gonna assume that we got something. What did we get? We got an IOU. What's the IOU account? Accounts receivable. So we, we, if we did the work, we're gonna assume we got something on the accrual basis. We don't do work and not get anything. Uh, we haven't got anything physically yet, but we're gonna assume that we got an IOU here for the work that we did. The accounts receivable has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we're gonna right click on that, gonna copy that, gonna bring our cursor down to H20, right click and paste it, one, two, three. Then the amount will be 2,000. We're gonna credit something for the same 2,000. So we're gonna put a negative 2,000 in this case. And uh, then the question is, why are people gonna pay us money? Because we earned revenue. So it's assets on top, then liabilities, then equity, then revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit. So I'm gonna right click on that, gonna copy that. Gonna put that in cell H21, right click and paste it one, two, three. Then we can go ahead and post this out. So this is the general journal that we're gonna to post to the general ledger. We're looking for the accounts receivable and accounts receivable will be in cell S13. We're gonna say equals in cell S13. Gonna go ahead and point to that 2000 next to the receivable, which should make the receivable go up from 38258. Puts us out of bounds by that 2000 until we record the other side. So the other side being revenue. So the general ledger is in order. We got assets over here in green, then uh, liabilities in orange, and then equity, and then revenue. So here's revenue down here. Notice they all have credits because they only go one way. They go up in the credit direction, and we are in AF20 in this case. So we're gonna say equals in AF20 and hold down that left arrow until we get to the revenue account. There's the 2000, gonna say enter, and revenue will go up from 29.8 to 31.8. Where will we see that 31.8? Also on the trial balance is where we will see it right there. What happened to net income? It went up by 2002. 31.8 minus 8 minus 950 equals net income of 30,050. Also shown in the tax bar, 30,050 because we are highlighting those cells. Okay, one more transaction on 531 and the owner withdraws money. So if we are the owner, then we're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna take some money out of the business. The business account is of course for business. If I want to go on vacation or whatnot on the personal side, then I should first take the money out of the business account, put it into my personal account, then go on vacation. So that's that's gonna be the plan now. Uh, we're gonna pull out the money from the business. So uh, is cash affected? Yeah, for the business, the money is being pulled out. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna copy the cash. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm gonna go to the bottom, right click, paste it, one, two, three. I'm gonna go to, to the column J, credit side, negative 10,000. We're gonna debit something. The debit will go on top for the same amount, 10,000. And the only question is, what will that debit be then? And the owner's drawing the money out. So it's gonna be down here in the equity section. And the reason I make the equity section uh, highlighted in blue in this case is because that's kind of like the dividing line between the balance sheet, which is up here, and the income statement, which is down here. So here's the equity section. Here's the amount owed to the owner as of the beginning of the time period. And uh, we're gonna make that go down, but we're not gonna put it to that account directly. We're gonna make kind of like a contra equity account just called draws so that we can see directly how much money was taken out by the owner. And uh, that's important when we're sole proprietor, it becomes more important when we're a partnership because we wanna see exactly uh, how much each partner took out during the certain time period. So we're gonna say draws is going to be the debit. We already know it's gonna be a debit because we credited cash. If we think about it, why is it a debit? Because really it's bringing this equity account down. It's kind of like a contra equity account that has a credit balance. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. So we're making a new account, which will actually go up in the debit direction, but it's really bringing the total equity down. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it here in H23, right click, paste it one, two, three, and then post that out. So that's an equity account. So we're posting this general journal entry to the general ledger looking for draws, which is an equity account, uh, general ledgers in order, assets and then liabilities, then equity. So here's draws over here in AE14, so AE14. 
we're going to say equals. I'm going to hold down the left arrow. We're going to go to this draws of 10,000 and enter. And there's the 10,000. We can see the 10,000 here. We are now out of balance by the 10,000 until we record the other side to cash, which will be over here in cell P20. So we're in P20 and we'll just say equals and left down to cash. And when we hit enter the 10, the 53, 250 will go down to 53, uh, 43, 250. And that will also be on the trial balance over here. And we are back in balance. Uh, so just notice that uh, the trial balance is back in balance. If we look at the uh, the accounting equation, we can see that assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. If we rearrange that, also note that it also means that assets minus liabilities will equal equity, meaning the equity is the book value. And you can see that here too. Notice that if I highlight the assets, uh, adding this, adding this, adding this, I'm up to 77, uh, 1. If you keep watching that number, it's going to now go down by the 330 to the 76, uh, 770, then down to 68, 970, and so on till it gets to, uh, 62, 350. That 62, 350 has to be the same as these blue numbers here. So the reason all these numbers are blue, even though we have the revenue, the expenses, is because really they're all part of equity. Notice they're all part of this number. And that has to make sense because the top half represents uh, what we have minus who we owe it to. The bottom half represents what is owed to the owner or what the book value of the company is worth. But it's currently broken out between basically the beginning balance and or investments and what was taken out and all of the what was earned through that time period. So if we highlight this second half, we also come out to this 62,350 which we have up here 62,350. So uh, keep that in mind. You, you can look at this trial balance uh, and spend some time looking at the trial balance and highlighting different things and seeing how this ties out to the accounting equation.